Okay, today we're going to learn how to read a classification key. Um, this is a Cambridge topic, topic, not an Ames topic. And on the Cambridge test, usually you'll be given one classification key and you'll be asked to read it. It is a super simple, easy thing to do, so we're going to run through it pretty quick. A little bit of background. Um, organisms are classified based on their characteristics. And basically they're classified into different um, groupings. Um, the top level grouping is called a domain. And then underneath that, after you get in, you're in, put into a domain or your, your organism is put into a domain, then it would be classified into a kingdom. And then after it's put into a kingdom, it would be classified into a phylum and a class and a species. So basically, um, this is a way to classify different animals into different groups. Now, um, the, Cambridge doesn't go real deep into phylums or classes or species, but what they do like you to know is they do like you to know the five different kingdoms. Um, so here they are. Um, there's the Animalia Kingdom, which ha contains mostly animals. So if something is an animal, we put it into the Animalia Kingdom. Then you've got the Plantea Kingdom. It's for plants. So again, if something is a plant, we put it into the Plantea Kingdom. Then you've got fungi, which are funguses. Those are heterotrophs. They usually eat decomposing things. Um, they produce spores in order to reproduce. And the biggest number one example that most people know of when they think of fungus are mushrooms. So the little mushrooms that grow out on the lawn sometimes, those are fungus. The third kingdom is the Protista kingdom. Um, that contains autotrophs and heterotrophs. They're usually very small. Um, they can be single-celled or multi-celled. Um, examples of single-celled are paramecium and amoebas. Examples of multi-celled are algae. And finally, you have the Monera kingdom. That contains mostly single-celled organisms. Um, and it's con it contains mostly bacteria. Bacteria is the number one thing that's in the Monera kingdom. So again, once you place an organism into a kingdom, it's in the animal kingdom or the plant kingdom or the fungus kingdom or the Monera kingdom or the Protista kingdom, you can then put it into smaller and smaller groups and break it into smaller and smaller groups. However, if a scientist comes across an animal that has been discovered before by other scientists or other people, um, but that scientist doesn't know what that organism or that animal is, then they can use a classification key to figure out what it is. Um, another word for a classification key is also a dictonomous key. Um, I know what you're thinking, guys. You're thinking, wait a minute. If I come across an animal I don't know what it is, why don't I just go to the Internet and I Google it and I put in all its characteristics and then up will pop a picture and then if I recognize the picture, then that must be it. Yes, yeah, scientists do do that nowadays and people do do that nowadays. Classification keys were used a lot more when we did not have the internet. But again, it is a Cambridge standard that we have to learn and know for the test, so we're going to go ahead and know it. This is an example of a dictumous key. Um, and basically, with every key you start at step one, you read and you figure out, okay, which one does my animal have? Do they have A or B? And then if they have A, here you would go to step two. If they have B, you would go to step six. You jump down to that step, and then you read, and you figure out, okay, does it have A or B? And then you jump down to that next step. So that's basically how you read a key. It's super easy. This, guys, is a super easy key. Um, but again, I want to give you an easy one to start off. I'll give you some more complicated examples in class when you're actually practicing reading them. Um, but basically, again, start at step one. Does my animal fly or not fly? If it flies, you go to step two. If it doesn't fly, you go to step six. Then you read from there. Is it hairy and furred or not furred? Go to step eight or seven. And you basically follow it down until finally you stop at an animal. So if you go across and it doesn't say go to the next step, it just has an animal there, then you know, okay, that's the animal. That must be what I'm looking at. So here's the first example. Um, that we're going to go through, and I'm going to show you how to read the key. Your organism is fly, seen flying in the sky. As it flies, it seems to hover close to the surface of the earth. Upon looking at the organism, you notice that it has blue and red feathers. Its feet are not web-footed, so you can assume that it doesn't live near water. What organism are you looking at? Go ahead and write that, pause the video, guys. Write that down, and when you're done, unpause the video. Okay, well, you've now unpaused the video. We're going to go back to our key. Going to our key, we say, okay, step. we always start at step one. Does it fly or not fly? Well, the direction said that basically our animal was flying, so we're going to go to step two. Boop. Then it says, okay, if it's feathered, go to step three. If it's not feathered, it must be a little brown bat. 
Well, the directions said that it had blue and red feathers, so we're going to go step three. Boop. If it has webbed feet, then it must be a mallard duck. If it does not have webbed feet, then we're going to go step four. Well, again, our description said it did not have webbed feet, so we're going to come down here to step four. Boop. Then it says, okay, if it's hovering, it has hovering flight, it flies low to the ground, it must be a ruby-throated ruby hummingbird. If it doesn't hover, hover, then we go to step five. Well, the description said that it was hovering close to the ground, so we can stop here. It was a ruby-throated hummingbird. That's basically how you read the key. Tell you what, guys, write down this one in your notebook. Pause the video while you're writing it down. When you finish writing it down, unpause the video. Go ahead and go. Okay, well, you should be done by now. Real quick, let's go back to the key and go through the key. It says, you know, we we'll start with step one. Is it flying or not flying? Well, um, that example said that that animal does not fly. So we're going to go to step six. Boop. Was it hairy and furred or not furry? Well, the example said that it had soft black and white fur which means it has fur, so we're going to go down to step eight. Boop. Was it an aquatic animal, water animal, or a terrestrial animal, guys? Terrestrial means land. Okay, and we it said it was a land animal. It lives on land, so we're going to go to step nine. Boop. If it was hopping or jumping, we would go to step ten, but the example said that it did not hop or jump, so we're going to go to step eleven. Boop. If it had a large, flat, leathery tail, it would be a beaver. But the example said that it actually had a soft, round, ringed tail. That does not sound leathery or flat to me. So a tail that's not leathery or flat, it says go to step 12. We're going to go to 12. Boop. It said if it was a hoofed animal, you're going to go to step 13. If it was not hoofed, you're going to go to 17. Our example said that it did not have hooves. It had feet. So we're going to jump down here to 17. And then finally, if it had a long, ringed tail, it's a raccoon. If it had a short bobtail, we go to step 18. Well, the example said that it had a soft, round, ringed tail. So that must that fits right here. So we're going to come over, and our animal was a raccoon or a procyon latter. So that if you got raccoon when you tried it, you were correct. Coming over here. So what happens if we have to create a key? So we don't have a key, but we, we have a bunch of animals, and we want to create a key. Well, this is pretty simple, guys. Basically, you take all of the organisms or animals that you have and you look at them. And you say, okay, what's one thing that the organisms have that I can use to break this big group of animals into two smaller groups? And you use that. And then you break them into two smaller groups. And then for each of those groups, you say, okay, what's a characteristic I can use to break this group down into two smaller groups? And you just keep doing that until finally you get down to where you only have one animal or organism in each group. So again, we're going to do a really simple example here. We'll do some harder ones in class. Let's say we had a dog, a cat, a bird, a frog. And guys, change the fish to people. I actually changed the fish to people in my example. So we have a dog, a cat, a bird, a frog, and a people. How can we make a key for those organisms? Well, the first thing we do is we try to figure out how can we break these into two different groups. You could use a lot of things. You could say animals that have fur or no fur. You could say animals that have um, beaks or no beaks. You could say animals that have slimy skin or dry skin. I mean, you could use almost anything to break this into two groups. But the thing that I used was the number of legs. So I said, okay, if it has normally has four legs, I'm going to put it into one group. If it normally has two legs, I'm going to put it into another group. So that broke my groups down into, I had one group with dogs, cats, and frogs. They all have four legs. And my other group had birds and people in it because they have two legs. Then from there I said, okay, I got my dogs, my cats, and my frogs. How can I break that into two groups? Well, I've got one group that has fur and the other does not have fur. So that broke my groups down. And then you just keep breaking down until you get to the end. Let me show you what I ended up with. So step one, I said, okay, if it has four legs, go to step two. If it has two legs, go to step three. The four-legged animals were my cats, my dogs, and my frog. The two-legged animals were my birds and my people. 
So then I went ahead and went down to step two, the four-legged animals, and I said, okay, how can I break the dogs and the cats and the frogs up into two groups? Well, I used fur or, or, or no fur, or fur or slimy skin. So I said, okay, if it has fur, go to step four. Noticed I skipped step three because I already used that up here. I'm going to come back to it. Okay, I said, go to step four. If it has slimy skin, boom, it must be a frog. So then I jumped down here. I skipped step three. I came down here, did step four, and I said, okay, if it normally barks, it must be a dog. If it normally purrs, it must be a cat. Okay. So now I've got these broken down to where there's one thing in each group. That's it. Then I came back up here and I said, okay, the things with two legs. I got birds and people. I came down to step three and I said, well, what's the difference between birds and people? Well, there's a lot of differences. You could use beak or no beak, talons or no talons, wings or no wings. I decided to use flying. So I said, okay, if it can fly without machines, it must be a bird. If it can't fly without machines, it must be a human. And now I have my key that I could go ahead and follow to classify those different organisms. Again, this was a super easy example just to show you how to do it. We will do harder examples in class. Have a good night.